We often hear about how important it is to be joyful and well rested and calm when we are homeschooling our kids, how important that atmosphere is that we have in the home and how atmosphere really comes down to the mother and the mother's emotional state. Well, It's hard to be joyful. It's hard to be calm and peaceful when you have a toddler running riots. So that is what today's podcast episode is all about. How to homeschool your children when you have a toddler at home. How to stay sane and keep the learning going. This is episode number 64 of the Raising Mums podcast. Welcome to Raising Mums, a live weekly broadcast streaming on Facebook and Instagram that inspires mums to live with purpose and intention, to raise their children mindfully, and empowers mothers everywhere to own their lives and thrive doing it. A few years ago, I think it was about three years ago now, I recorded a podcast about how to homeschool when you have a baby, a little baby. And if you are in that stage right now, I really encourage you to go over and check check that episode out. I will leave the link for that in the show notes. What we're going to be talking about today is the toddler age. That stage between one and three years old, it's a beautiful stage of life where they're learning so much and they make you laugh all the time. But it's also the stage that can be the most frustrating, can be the most challenging phase. And I know this because I'm in that place right now. I have three older kids. The eldest is 12. Then we have a 10-year-old and a seven-year-old. And thrown into the mix of homeschooling them is my two-year-old son. So right now I am in the thick of this and I have had a lot of experience with the other three as well and I want to share some things that have helped me to keep the momentum going in our homeschool so I can be sure that the kids are still learning even when my toddler is causing chaos and I'm going to share a little bit of advice on how to minimize that chaos as well. Does it sound good? Okay, grab yourself a coffee, grab yourself your headphones, get comfy and let's get into this. So let's set the scene. You're in the middle of a homeschooling morning, your elder kids are doing some work independently and you decide you want to do something with your toddler, something enriching, nourishing activity for them that doesn't involve a screen. So you get out some children's paints. Before you know it, red paint splatters across the floor and completely oblivious, your two-year-old looks up briefly and then continues mixing big swirls of different colours all across the kitchen table. His clothes will, of course, have to be changed after this, and you suspect from the smell that his nappy need to be changed as well. And that is going to lead to a meltdown, because it always does. And then he shouts for more paint. More paint, you're thinking? If I give you any more paint, it'll be running down the legs of the kitchen table. So you try to explain that to him. His siblings tried to explain that to him, but all the while his screams get louder and louder and what was once finger painting has turned into entire hand painting and it gets more and more wild. And then before you can stop him, he's up. He's off his chair and you're too late. Paint is smeared all over the chair, the wall, the kitchen doors. So you quickly heave him up to the sink His legs are kicking, his body's wriggling, furiously trying to escape, and he's screaming. You rinse his hands under the water. By now, he is mad. And so are you. And then, your daughter asks for help with her maths. Your son wants help with an essay he's writing. This is the life we lead, friends. It's no wonder that you are struggling. So let's break this down. How can we prevent things like this happening and how can we deal with them when they do? Now, before you jump to how you're going to fix this, I want you to consider the why. And I've said this in another episode before, I'm sure. Before you jump to the how, think about why. Why is this happening? Because once you know why, the solution will be obvious. Why is your little boy or your little girl behaving in that way? Why won't they let you read aloud to the other kids? Why are they always up on the table when the other kids are doing their schoolwork? 
Why do they always steal the pencils that your other kids are using or try and take the laptop or whatever it is? What is motivating that behavior? Charlotte Mason told us that children are born persons. So that little boy, that little girl has a motivation, has a reason why that is happening, why they're behaving in that way. Is there negative behavior because they're feeling bored? Is it because they're feeling lonely? Is it because they need comfort? Is it because they're curious? Is it because they're so excited about something they want to show you? Do they just wanna join in? What is it that's motivating your little toddler to behave the way they're behaving? They're not doing it just to be disruptive. There is a deeper reason for it and you have to dig a little deeper to find what that is. So clearly that example I gave before of the toddler playing with paints and wanting more paints, that's come from a place of excitement. You know, he was so excited to have all those paints and those colors and the way it felt and the way it looked. He was having a great time and he wanted more of it. He had a plan of what he was gonna do with more paints and he didn't understand why you wouldn't let him. And so his tantrum came from a place of frustration of not being able to understand what you were saying and not being able to communicate with you what he wanted that paint for. The lack of communication, this difficulty that we have that they can't communicate with us as well as they want and we can't understand them as much as we would want. And that can make these tantrums even more extreme than they otherwise would be. So right now, have a think. How does your toddler disrupt your homeschool day? Where are those difficult moments where things flare up? And have a think now, what could be causing that? What emotions could your child be experiencing right now that lead to that kind of behavior? Because then we can help your son or your daughter from a place of love and compassion to deal with those emotions and set up the environment in such a way so that he or she doesn't have to deal with them or can deal with them in a more productive way. Now it's time to pause for a quick break and a message from today's sponsor. This episode is being sponsored by Mirage Stories. Mirage Stories is an Islamic app for Muslim children. It includes Islamic audiobooks, It includes some Islamic cartoons, which my children love, interactive children's stories, and lots of educational games. And what I really appreciate, and what I know you will appreciate too, is that there are no adverts. Alhamdulillah. And now Mirage Stories have very kindly offered me, and offered you listeners, an exclusive discount. So if you'd like to claim your discount, just go to ourmuslimhomeschool.com forward slash mirage and that will get you up to 30% off. This app is a wonderful alternative to mainstream entertainment for Muslim children ages four through to nine. The quality of their production is outstanding and you know that I really value high quality stories with really rich language and these stories do deliver. Um, Your children can listen to them in the car when they're having their lunch as a bedtime story. It's just a very easy way to incorporate Islamic learning into your child's life. The interactive games are really high quality. They'll teach your children, you know, how to pray, make wudu, some simple Arabic, learning the names of Allah and so much more. I cannot recommend it enough. We have been using Mirage Stories for years. And so if you would like to claim that 30% discount, just go to ourmuslimhomeschool.com forward slash mirage. So you figured out why, you figured out why this is happening, why this difficult behavior keeps recurring again and again. So now you know why you have now two options, two avenues to explore. The first one is to deal with your toddler directly. How can you directly help and support them? The next avenue to explore is how can you set up his or her environment to prevent those difficult situations ever arising again? Now, don't worry, we're gonna go through both of these different avenues separately. So let's start with how you can directly support your toddler during your homeschooling day. So if you believe that at least part of this, the reason that your toddler disrupts your homeschooling efforts is because he's bored, 
then of course the obvious solution to that is to give him activities to keep him busy and engaged while you're homeschooling. Something that I really encourage you to do is to set aside toys that are specifically for him and only brought out during homeschool hours. And those toys are special homeschool toys for him and he is not allowed to play with them outside of homeschool time. Instantly, when you bring those toys out, his attention will be drawn to them because he knows this is a special time, he won't get these again until the next day and so his attention will be directed towards that rather than disrupting the homeschool. And that is a great way to keep your child learning and and independently working on something while you educate your children at home. One word of warning, the toys that you put in that box, it's important what you choose, okay? Don't choose toys that are really noisy or make a lot of noise when you manipulate them. Don't choose toys that make a mess or anything, of course, that needs your help to work with. It should be toys that your little toddler can work on and play with independently. Or maybe your toddler's interrupting everything because he's curious. He's curious what's going on. Why do they all get these special looking books and these special looking pens and I don't get anything? If that's the case, again, the answer is obvious. Get your toddler some workbooks. Get your toddler some coloring books. What I do, handwriting books and any kind of books that we're using that we finished with, I'll just save them. And then I'll give the used books to my toddler to scribble all over. And they look just the same as what his elder brothers and sisters are using. Obviously they've been used already. He doesn't seem to mind. And he feels like he's taking part, which is what he wanted. So don't jump to throw away or recycle all those old workbooks and notebooks. Keep a few and set them aside because your toddler might enjoy using them. And once again, a word of warning. Make sure any pens that you're giving to your toddler at this stage for those workbooks or for coloring books or whatever you're providing them with, make sure those pens are washable. Make sure that those pens are not gonna leave stains on his clothes or on the carpet or wherever they end up being put. Minimize glue and glitter and anything that can cause mess. And this sort of segues into the other point about setting up the environment to support him. I'm going to talk about that in more depth a little bit later on. Maybe he's interrupting you because he's curious about something, something that you're doing with your eldest kids. If you're doing a science experiment or something hands on, he's probably really curious about what's going on. And the only solution there is just to pause, to allow him to have that moment and to share that moment with him. And likewise, if he's disruptive because he needs comforting, he needs to feel safe, he needs to feel loved, then again, you have to pause what you're doing and give him that love. And what a blessing that is to to have a child, a young child in your home, who wants your love and attention. I know it can be infuriating if it happens regularly. I know it can be frustrating if you've got a plan in place, particularly if you're under time constraints. But really, you're only going to get done what you were meant to get done. Whatever Allah had planned for you that day is what you will achieve that day. And perhaps that little toddler crying out to you for a cuddle and a hug is a test from Allah. How will you respond? If you have a child who who likes to be cuddled, who likes to have that affection uh, poured upon them, that it might be worth, before you even begin homeschooling, to give your toddler that one-on-one focus time first thing. Pull them onto your lap, read them a story, give them cuddles, play with them before you even begin with the other kids. Fill up his love tank so that he feels good, he feels loved, and you can get on with your homeschool day. I have seen on Pinterest, and I think YouTube as well, people set up things called busy bags, which are specific bags for their toddlers to work through. It's almost like a little curriculum, a little kindergarten, preschool thing that they do at home. I've never done that because personally that looks like far too much effort Um, and I'm not a lazy person as I hope you know 
but I'm only going to put in that effort if I can see that it's going to pay a return. And I know my kids and I would likely create all those busy bags full of fun activities and things and my toddler would just turn his nose up at it and I will have spent hours creating these things and he wouldn't be interested in. He'd much rather be sitting at the table colouring in an old workbook. But if you think that's something that your toddler might be interested in, something a bit more structured, a little bit more organisation, go on to Pinterest or YouTube and type in toddler busy bags. So we said once you know why your toddler is behaving in a certain way, then you can find the solution, either by directly addressing it with your toddler or by setting up the environment. So if we talk about the environment now quickly, the environment, as I touched upon before, should minimise the amount of chaos that is possible for your little two-year-old to create. That means, as I said, no pens that are going to stain, no glue, no glitter that's going to cause a mess. Likewise with the toys, again, nothing that's going to cause a lot of noise or a lot of mess. So things like toy cars or dolls and prams, wooden puzzles, blocks, um, wooden train tracks and trains, the toy kitchen, like all of those things are beautiful examples of great worthwhile toys to invest in. There's no mess, but your children can play independently with them and it's open play. It encourages imagination and creativity. And those kinds of toys are actually the toys you will find your children return to again and again. Um, and they also last for years. Likewise, you want to be able to peacefully and in rest be with your children and homeschool them without worrying at the back of your mind that your toddler might be doing something dangerous. So set up the environment in such a way so you know that that is next to impossible. That means, you know, stair gates, uh, child locks on the kitchen doors, put things up high that you don't want them to touch, hide things if necessary, um, but just set up the environment in such a way so you're not stressed on top of everything else about your toddler's safety. And all that being said and done, I want you to know that it is okay to get help. It is okay to call somebody to your home, to help watch your toddler so that you can homeschool the kids or the other way around, you know, you can call somebody to the house to homeschool the kids so that you can look after your toddler. It's okay to use childcare outside of the home. It's okay as well to get your children to take turns, to look after and play with their little brother or sister while you do focus time with the eldest. Also, it's okay to consider online classes for your children as well. And maybe, you know, maybe you did set your heart at the beginning of the year on doing a lot of subjects as a family. But now with a toddler, that seems less and less likely to ever really happen. So if that's the case, it's okay for, you know, a temporary time for your children to go off and learn certain subjects independently. I'm a big fan of the morning baskets, but there are seasons in life where you can do more and there are seasons in life where you do less during that morning basket time. And so if you're in that stage too, it's okay to cut back on the amount of group work you're doing with your children and assign more independent work even if it's just for a short time. Now I know this is going to be hard for some of you because you have dreams. You've dreamt of homeschooling your kids for so long and this is, might come as a big blow to you. You don't want to give up teaching to somebody outside of the home. You don't want your children to be working independently all the time in their rooms. You want to be learning together as a family and you want to be involved in all of that. But maybe this is not the time for that. And I challenge you now to let go of what you think homeschooling should look like. All those preconceived ideas you have of what it really means. And actually look at the reality in your own home and look at the children in front of you and look at the situation that you have been placed in and now decide what it should look like. Sometimes we tell ourselves that a good mother would do this, a good mother would do that. But the truth is that we've created these rules in our minds. Or perhaps we learnt them as children watching our own parents. But the truth is, the right thing to do is what is right for you now. 
So look at your situation now. And if after all of these things and trying all the things out, you still feel like you need more help, then I want to tell you that that might be the best thing you can do right now in your situation. Being a mum teaches us a lot of hard truths about ourselves and we grow so much as women, as mothers during that process. And I think no time more than during those toddler years. Those years are the hardest on the nuffs. They're the hardest on our ego. We have to give up some days. We have to give up our our plans for the day. We have to give up the tidiness of our homes. We have to give up the cleanliness of our own clothes that's covered in sticky fingerprints. (laughs) Sometimes we just have to give up and surrender to it. And that really is the biggest lesson that I've learned from all four of my kids is that it's okay to surrender to it and accept that this was Allah's plan for the day, that you were never going to get all those things done on the list, that your house was never going to stay tidy. It was never meant to. And it's okay if things are not perfect, that perfection is never found in this world. Perfection is only in the world to come. I know that this stage in being a mum is hard, but I also know that you are strong. And I also know that you have faith and trust in Allah. And you will see this through because you love your children and you love Allah. So that comes to the end of today's episode. I hope that you found that useful I hope that it was both inspiring and practical. If you did, then please do share this with your friends on social media, on WhatsApp, or wherever you hang out online. Or just tell them when you see your friends in person, tell them to listen to the Raising Mums podcast. Head over to wherever you're listening to this podcast right now and leave me a five-star review. It would mean the world to me. I read all your reviews. And I'm so grateful for all of you who've already done so. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Have a beautiful week. Assalamu alaikum.